Hello, my name is Matt Rabel, and this is a demonstration of jhipster4. If you go to jhipster.github.io, you'll find its homepage, and you'll notice if you click on the Quick Start Guide, it has the steps that are needed to begin using jhipster. Basically, you have to install the generator, you have to create a new directory, and then you have to type yo jhipster. And then you can use JDL Studio to generate your entities, or you can generate them from the command line using yo jhipster colon entity, and then the entity name. So let's get started. First of all, I wanted to show you that all of the instructions and all of the commands I'll be using and the code I'll be typing is in this jhipster4 demo on GitHub, and we'll basically walk through creating a project, generating entities, adding the business logic, making the UI enhancements, and then deploying to the cloud, all in 20 minutes. So to begin, we'll do a make dir blog, cd into there, and type yoj hipster. And we'll create a monolithic application. You can create a microservices architecture with jhipster using a gateway and several microservice applications behind that. The UI for that will still reside on the gateway, and it's very easy to generate the code for the UI from the existing backends that you created. Call the base name blog or jhipster. We'll use JOT authentication, SQL database, H2 for development, EHCache, Maven, and Angular 2. And I do like SAS. I do like internationalization. We'll go ahead and use Spanish just to match the tutorial. And Gatling and Protractor. Now we'll open it up in IntelliJ. Now that everything's imported and set up, we can go ahead and start the app. Now we can open it in our browser. And you'll see this is basically what jhipster gives you by default. You can log in with admin admin or user user. There's no entities yet, but under administration you can see there's user management. There's metrics for the application, both JVM metrics, as well as HTTP requests. We haven't made many, so there's not a whole lot in here. There's also help of the application. Configuration settings, auditing, and even logging that you can adjust on the fly. For instance, if you wanted to change Spring Framework from Warn to Debug, you could easily do that just by clicking this button. There's also a Swagger API. If you want to expose or show people how to use just the API itself, they can even try it out from the UI. And of course, there's also Spanish version of the application. So we'll go ahead and log out, change it back to English, and generate some entities. So to generate entities, I recommend using JDL Studio. And this is a pre-configured blog schema that I came up with. This is also available in the JDL samples project. You can see blog.jh there. If you have your own schema that you want to add to this, we encourage you to do that. But this basically has a blog and an entry and tags. And blogs has a one-to-many relationship with entries, um, many-to-many with tags, and many-to-one with users. And you can see all that on the left here. We have entity blog, entity entry, tag, and then the many-to-one and the many-to-many -many relationships. So if we download that, we can then import it from our IDE. using yo jhipster import jdl and this will prompt us to override the liquid base master.xml file and now just to look at the structure of the project a bit under source main java is all the java code that contains for instance spring configuration files for the database for caching as well as logging 
and even security for spring security and all the various authentication providers, token providers that you need for JWT authentication. And of course a web configure that tells where all the files are located and also does spring profiles. And there's even some HTTP support, HTTP2 support in the latest release. You'll notice this line up here, editor config is overriding code styles for this file. I recommend clicking OK on that. That is driven by this editor config file that basically sets your IDE settings and this is recognized by a lot of IDEs so whether you're using Eclipse or NetBeans or even something like WebStorm then this will still be recognized and it will configure your spacing and tabs accordingly. Under source main web app is the Angular app and here is the main entry module that has all the various modules for this application. You can see the shared module which is services, home, admin, account, and entity. And our entity now has all these blog, entry, and tag entities created. So we still have our application running in the background and you'll notice it restarted thanks to Spring Dev Tools, Spring Boot Dev Tools. And we can use Yarn Start to show the UI and have automatic reload when any of the files change. So if we sign in with admin admin or user user, you'll see that we have blog, we have entries. So starting with blog, we can do create an admins blog. and create a user's blog and we can create some entities for that or entries and then the date proper date do this in the user's blog. So you can see one of the problems here is that we have blogs and you can see all the blogs and for entries you can see all the entries. So let's fix this so you only see the actual blog that you're logged in as. So if we go back to our project there is a blog resource endpoint that gets created. If you look at the structure of that you can see get all blogs here and if we just change that from find all to find by user as current user, you can see this has already been created in our blog repository for us. So if we recompile that, Spring Boot will start automatically for us or restart. And then if we refresh our browser, now you see we're limited to the one that logged in. And if we look at the entries, it still hasn't done that. So to fix that, again, there's an entry resource. And if we look at get all entries, we can see there's another find all. So there's no limiting of who can see what. And we can change this to find by blog user login order by date descending. And this is basically a feature of Spring Data JPA where you can have methods in your repositories and it creates HQL to match. So we also want to pass in the current logged in user, which is available from Security Utils, their username. And then we'll go ahead and generate this method. So we save that one, save that one, recompile. Now if we refresh, the reason that Browser Sync didn't refresh for us is because we made back-end changes, not front-end changes. So now you can see we're actually limited to see the current user's blogs 
And if we logged in as admin, then we will only see our blogs and our entries. So let's change this so we can actually do HTML in here. You'll notice that if we type in HTML, it escapes it. So to fix that, in the entry component, which renders the actual list screen, you'll notice that there's an entry content with no coding to allow HTML. So to allow HTML, you have to make one small change, and that is to use inner HTML in brackets, and then you notice it reloaded automatically and shows what that looks like. The last thing I'd like to do is to change from using this table to using a single column, just like you would expect a normal blog to look like. And there you go. So now you can still edit that entry if you like, or delete it. So let's deploy this application to Heroku. You can do that using Yo J Hipster Heroku. I'm going to do J Hipster for demo. Do it in the US. And you can see that took about five minutes to run. Now you can run Heroku open. And you see that our app has been deployed to the cloud. You can sign in using admin admin or user user, of course. And it's got all the entities ready to go and ready to administer. If you need help with jhipster, we recommend use Stack Overflow and the jhipster tag. And there was plenty of existing questions and you can easily add new ones and we'll see those and answer them accordingly. Thanks for checking out jhipster and go forth and develop great applications.